I will take you through how to validate an access token, JWT token signature validation methods, usage of JSON web key sets for signature validation, and finally I will take you through the demonstration. By the end, you will have a solid understanding of how to implement this security setup. Hello everyone, in this video I am going to explain you how to secure a Spring Boot API using Keyclock Identity and Access Management System. Before going into the details, I will briefly explain the request flow diagram. Here you can see the Spring Boot API, Keyclock server and the Postman client. Postman client can be replaced with any HTTP client which can be an Angu Angular, React or Vue type of single page application or perhaps it can be a backend client like Java or Node.js. In order to call the Spring Boot API from the client application, first of all client has to get an access token. In order to retrieve the access token, first client has to communicate with the Keyclock server. Here you can see as the first step, client application call Keyclock and retrieve an access token. Here you can see it is just a request and a response, but based on the OpenID connect grant type you are using, this flow can be changed. Using directly a request and receiving the response is valid for user password grant type and client credentials grant type. But if you are using implicit flow or authorization code flow, in that case there will be a different flow. Anyway, ultimately application should have a valid access token in order to call the Spring Boot API. Once the access token is received, here you can see as the second request postman client call the Spring Boot API. In this case, whenever the request is sent, the received access token will be added as a bearer token to the in the authorization header. Once this particular request is received, before sending a response, Spring Boot API should validate this access token whether it is a legitimate one or not. In order to validate the access token, Spring Boot API should have information about the Keyclock server. Normally, as the access token, a JWT token will be received to the Spring Boot API. In order to validate that, Spring Boot API has to communicate with Keyclock and loads its JSON web, web key set. By using the JSON web key set, Spring Boot API can validate the access token received from the Postman application. After that, if the token is valid, based on the privileges in the access token, Spring Boot API can decide that particular request should be permitted or not. If the request is permitted, then it will successfully send a response back. Otherwise, HTTP 403 forbidden response will be sent back. So you don't need to worry about JW case right now because in the later part we will be thoroughly talking about this access token validation part. Uh, so for the moment let's go into the explanation. In the explanation first I will be talking about the access token validation. After that I will be showing the demonstration. Let's talk about the details. How to validate an access token generated by Keyclock. Let's learn how an API validates a JW token. A JWT access token is a self-contained token. That means the token itself contain information for the backend API to get access decisions. JWT token is composed of three sections, header, body and the signature. Header section contains details like the type of the token and the algorithm used to sign the token. Body or the payload section contains attribute included into the JWT token. Those attributes are called claims. Last section is called the signature which is created using the header section, body section and the secret key. If any attribute of the header or body is changed, signature should be changed or otherwise it is invalid. When it comes to the token validation, you can use any number of claims included to validate the token as your application requires. But there are some mandatory attributes to be validated, I will explain them here. The most important claim is the issuer, this validation is mandatory. You can see the issuer name in the ISS claim. Backend API fully trusts the issue and because of that any token coming from the given issue is trusted. You should validate whether this token was generated exactly by the issuer mentioned in the ISS claim because anyone can generate a JW token by adding the issuer name as the ISS claim. Therefore to validate the issuer it is mandatory to validate the signature of the token. After that you need to validate whether the token is expired or not. Tokens have a lifetime because of that if a token is stolen it can be used for a limited time period only. Next one is the audience. Same identity product can generate access tokens for multiple clients to access different backend APIs. Therefore you need to make sure from the backend level the token you are getting from the request is intended for the exact backend. For that audience can be validated but this is an optional validation. 
Here I have mentioned only a few attributes, but you can validate other attributes as well according to your needs. Here I will briefly explain about the signature validation. Signature section is validated in order to identify whether someone has modified the token after it is created by the identity provider. Signature is generated using standard algorithms which requires token header, body and a secret key to generate the signature. Signature verification is also done using standard algorithms. They require the JW token and the secret key. There are two types of signatures. They are symmetry key signatures and asymmetry key signatures. If the same secret is used for both generation and the verification of the signature, they are called symmetric signatures. This signature can be used if both generator and verifier belongs to the same organization or entity. But most of the time, signature gener generator and verifier are different entities. For that kind of scenarios, asymmetric key signatures are used. One key named private key is used for the signature generation and another key called public key used for the validation. This is the most widely used method and our demonstration also shows an asymmetric key signature verification. You should know that signature generation and verification is an advanced topic. I am not going to explain more on that topic in this video. Now we are done with the concepts. Let me take you through the demonstration. This is what we will be showing in the demonstration. I have used Keyclock as the identity provider, Postman as the client application and a Spring Boot app as the backend API. Since this is a demonstration, I have used the OpenID Connect password grant type. This flow is very simple. As the first step, Postman client sends a request to the identity provider and get an access token. After that, Postman sends an HTTP request to the Spring Boot backend API, including the token. Spring Boot validates the token and if the token is valid, it sends a response. Let's inspect the Spring Boot application. Now I'm on the build.gradle file. Here I have included Spring Boot start a web dependency since this is a web project which handles HTTP requests and Spring security dependency to enable web security and two Auth0 libraries to validate the token. Here is the only controller class in this project which has exposed an endpoint named secure API and it gives a message saying hello once it is called. Let's check the security configurations of this project. Here I have secured all the endpoints. Only authenticated users can hit any endpoint exposed by this application. Here you can see I have added a custom security filter which does all the token validation tasks. Let's see how it is written. This is the most important part of this program. Every request coming to this Spring Boot application should go through this filter. Once a request hits this filter, the authorization header will be fetched from here. After that, token portion will be extracted. Here you can see I have ignored the first seven characters. It is because an access token is sent as a bearer token. Therefore, the first seven characters are ignored. Once the string token is extracted, it is decoded. For that I have used jwt.decode function. This function is provided by one of the OC0 libraries we provided. Please note that even though the string is decoded into an object, still the token is not verified. Now we are going to start the verification process. As I have mentioned earlier, my identity provider Keyclock by default generates JW tokens with asymmetric key signatures. That means the signature of the JWT access tokens will be created using a private key and it should be verified using another key. Verification key is called the public key. Both public and private keys belong to the identity provider. Any standard identity provider including Keyclock makes the public keys available under public URL which is accessible to anyone. This URL can be found using the OpenID Connect well-known config of the identity provider. Here I have shown the URL of the well-known config of the Keyclock identity provider, which is running on my local machine. If I would visit that URL using a web client, there is an attribute named jwkesuri. This URI shows all the public keys made available by the identity provider. If I would copy that URL and paste it on another tab, here we can see the available keys. Those keys are available as public certificates. Another very important attribute is the key ID. 
when the identity provider has multiple public keys available that implies it has multiple corresponding private keys as well since the access token validator has no clue about which private key was used to sign the token the identity provider insert another attribute name key id to the head of the jwt token from that key id the verifier can decide which public key should be used to verify the token therefore this key id attribute is a very important one our jwt verify also requires this keys or certificates therefore i have copied this url and you can see here i have created a jwk provider object which contains the keys we need to verify a token whenever we need a certificate for the verification we can fetch it by providing the key id i think now here you can understand what i have done i have captured the key id and based on that id i have fetched the json web key here i create the algorithm object using the public key there's another one important thing here i assume that all the tokens are signed using the rsa256 algorithm if you are going to validate tokens which were signed using different algorithms then you need to consider the algorithm name as well algorithm of the token can be found using the decoded jwt dot get algorithm function once the al algorithm object is created here i create the verifier I provide the algorithm as a parameter and I want the issuer name to be the URL I have provided and I have provided the audience name as well which is backend API so the JWT token that will be verified through this verifier will need to have this particular issuer and the, this provided audience I have only provided these two values in addition to that verifier will check whether the token is expired or not as well once the verify is built, I verify the decoded JOT using the verify.verify method. If the verification is successful, on the line number 57, you can see I am creating a secure context using the subject of the decoded JWT. If the verification is unsuccessful, it will throw an error. In that case, I catch that JWT verification exception and I log that error here. After that, I continue the execution by calling chain.do filter. This security context holder and set authentication, everything is related to Spring security. Here I have simply created a username password authentication token using the subject of the JWT token and here I have added a simple granted authority as simple authority and a, we, that particular token is set to the security context holder. That's all with the code base. Let's see how this setup works. Now I'm going to start my Spring Boot application in debug mode. Okay, now the Spring Boot application is up and running on port 9090 and my key clock ID to provide is also up and running on port 8080. Now I visit the Postman application. Here I am going to send this request to the key clock server. You can see here I have used the password grant type in which you can see URL request attributes. Grant type is set to password. Client ID is Postman client. Username and password are test and password 1 respectively. And here you can see the token endpoint. If you are not sure about this endpoint, you can get that from the well-known configuration section of your identity provider. HTTP request type is post. Now I click send button and as the response, I should get the access token from the Keylock server. Okay, I just got the access token in the response. Now I am going to copy this value. I just copied the value. Now I am going to send a request to the Spring Boot Backend API. Uh, this is the URL for the Spring Boot API, localhost 9090 SQL API. You already know my Spring Boot Backend is running on port 9090. Before calling this API, I need to add the token I just copied as a bearer token for this request. Therefore, I visit the authorization section. Select the type as bearer token and here I paste the token I just copied few seconds back okay now i click send button my debug pointer called that http request and here onwards we can see the execution flow here you can see first i extract the authorization header here you can see the authorization header with the bearer string token from this authorization header i capture the token okay now we have we have the token like this then I decode that token. Okay, here we have the decoded JWT now. If I would check the header section, you can see the type as JWT and also the algorithm RS256. And here we have the key ID as well. 
as i explained earlier key id is a very special id to find the correct public key to verify the signature okay here i create the algorithm next once the algorithm is created i create the verifier once the verify is built i call the verify method okay so since the verification was successful it didn't throw any exception after that spring security related configurations and executions are done i resume the program okay so now i again move to my postman application the status is 200 and we have got the message as well now i'm going to alter this token by adding additional characters and send it okay this time we got a 403 4 bin error since this token is not valid spring backend application does not allow this request to hit the SQL api endpoint with that we come to the end of this video if you have any question please put them as a comment see you in the next video thank you very much